So Phil, you've grown a company from just a handful of folks to, I believe, over 700 people. Well, more now than that. Yeah. More than that, okay. Um, how have you been able to maintain such a strong culture at a company as you've grown so quickly? Well, you have to put, it has to be part of the CEO's job. And you think about culture explicitly and every day, and it's one of the top three or four things I think about every day. As companies grow, and I've done it now through many of these phases you know, multiple times, and you see just some amazing places. At 80 people, everything changes in a company from my point of view. I've seen it over and over. There's a layer of management. People are just a little more separated. Departments have started to form, so you need to be, start to be explicit about culture, about values, about what matters. You start to have and look for very organically, what are things, so at Marketo, you know, we have purple everywhere. We didn't intend that, but it became a cultural touchstone that we spotted and then invested in. And so, you know, as a CEO, you look for opportunities to, to emphasize unique things and always be investing in culture. And, and so what advice would you give founders who are trying to invest in culture? It's a topic that isn't really talked about explicitly as much as some of the other technical topics. Number one is it simply takes time and you have to take time uh, it is not uh, at all a, a, a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a great thing to think about getting an organizational development consultant. There's people who can come in and in a day, you know, look at an organization, ask some questions, and, and provide an entrepreneur that doesn't have the kind of background in having seen it and done it with things that they ought to do. To, so I think the, the point is you wouldn't you know, choose a programming language for your product without thinking about it, or you wouldn't choose lots of other things. You need to be as intentional about building culture. Excellent. And, and you mentioned 80 people. Say a little bit more about that. What, what is it about that spot on the curve versus 20 or 200? You know, just say more. Why 80? I think, you know, it happens several times. I think when you're, I think when you're smaller than about 80, mm -hmm. people don't necessarily need to know departments. They're, everybody can communicate. Everybody can know each other very fluidly. So very informal mechanisms can, can, can be used. And they're, of course, more efficient if that's possible. But as soon as you start to have about 80 people, you've probably divided into a marketing team, a sales team, a product team, et cetera. So people start to have more identity. They have more focus. And as a result, they turn inward on their job. And you have to communicate differently, right? Because they no longer can see the whole. They no longer can develop a picture of what are we trying to do together. If you don't tell them in a more explicit way, then the, then the, then the organic way it can happen when you're small. And so this notion of communication patterns changing as you have more and more specialization and more and more people, you just have to pay attention to. Right. Um, you've hired a lot of leaders and executives over the years. Can you share some lessons learned or attributes that you look for in leaders and people that work for you? Yeah, I look for, number one, I look for somebody that I can communicate with. I'm a very, very communicative person. I like to strategize. I like to bounce ideas off of people. I like to I like to be able to talk and be understood. And so I need leaders that can really play in that kind of very high communication environment. So that's, a, that's kind of table stakes for me. I find that leaders in a company need to always think about the whole. Think about not just their job, but the whole job inside the company of what are we as a team trying to do. So I look for people who are curious and what I say, eyes up and out. That as they talk to me about how they would do their job, they can show me, and I'll ask questions about, tell me about when you collaborated with marketing, if I'm asking a product person or vice versa, so that I understand are these people that are thinking about the big picture or thinking about their department. And it makes all the difference in the world, ultimately, to get a team that's really thinking about the whole mission of the company. Um, and if you get those things right, you know, and as somebody that's qualified to do their job, which is, again, table stakes, get a pretty high success rate of hiring.